You're watching The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. It's good to be back. Benny Johnny, not so good. Growing up in villages like Arochuku, Bende, Ututu, Obinze, Arondiziogu, Mbano, Mbise, Okigwe, Oka, and others too numerous to mention in the early 70s, 80s, and 90s, whenever you hear that someone has gone to the city from these places, it was commonplace to conclude that such persons went to Aba, the home of the elephant, Eni, presently in today's Abia state, then commercial nerve center, then Lagos of the southeastern state of Nigeria, followed by Onicha, or if you like, the Japan of Africa. Every known rich man in the southeast then had a house in Aba, as it was home to all. That was before the advent of this current political dispensation in 1999. Today, save for the recent visit by the current vice president to the shoe market in Ariara Ari in Abba, and in the austerity of the Abba tailor, coupled with the never say never attitude of the average Nigeria, the city has lost its glory, as it is only now known in the negative, as even those that used to produce in Abba have all taken flight to go produce in China, where the cost of production is far cheaper, leaving only those without the means to go to China behind, are once made in Abba. It's now made in China. Thanks to the inept governor the state had had the misfortune of having since 1999, a recent trip to Aba will bring tears to your eyes as it is now anything but a city. All the roads are either dilapidated or non-existent. Electricity in Aba is a mirage. And like most towns in Nigeria, social infrastructures are neither for the rich nor for the poor. Government presence is very far from the living, not to talk of the dead that we are sometimes left to wonder if there's a governor in the state. But indeed, there is doctor, for that matter, Victor Okezie Biazu, whose conspicuous b-board dotted all around the state has taken over the place of social amenities. Aba Potako Road is now a dead trap. Aba Kotek Pene Road is not motorable. The old Aba Umaya Road, leading to the governor's village in Obingwa local government area, has been under construction for as long as I can remember, and never completed. Where can one really mention above today that brings a semblance of hope? Is it Ubo Hill, Ubo Hill Road, Orata Road, Abanot, the famous Araria Market, or the road by the popular Ungwa High School, not too far from a flyover that is taking eternity to build? All are but a city in darkness, dilapidated road and public infrastructures in shambles, begging for attention from both the federal and the state government. Even public workers are not spared the rot and relics of abandonment that Abba has become as they look on their faces, their tears of people whose salaries are neither certain nor guaranteed by a government that swore to serve and protect them. To them that have kickstarted the policies of 2023, even though we the people are yet to see the change of 2050, but have now been elevated to the next level of hunger and insecurity in 2019, we should remember that no country develops when its industrial cities are left in rain. Yeah. Oh, wow. This is it's actually very, very sad. But, you know, the, the sad thing is that most of um, the eastern part of Nigeria is now beginning to resemble... Not just this. east, though. Yeah, not just east, oh, but, yeah. you know, I mean... Almost like, all the roads Like our roads, yeah. Our roads, like my, my mom was explaining how um, the, between Asaba and mm -hmm. the Niger Bridge, yes. uh -huh. there's that small section that should be yeah. a five minute yeah. journey, okay. but it actually takes how many hours yeah. to just get through? Yeah. Um, between Saple and Wari yeah. is another it, it, you know, It's yeah, crazy. And even trending. when we look around Lagos, even just look at Lagos, you know, if most, yeah. of, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. most of the most of the roads. Uh, uh, so uh, yeah. so <laughs> th this Aba, it's just that Aba zone is on another level, mm -hmm. but truly this is the state of Nigerian roads. You know, I read somewhere which was a surprise surprised to me that apparently there was a, a department or um, an office that was put in place that should every time there's a pothole they they see the pothole yeah, public, and, public and, works and, yeah, and, and they're actually then, supposed to and, fill and, and the potholes you had um, highway engineers so what, so what happened to highway the, engineers the default yeah what happened i mean the okay, same I, thing that happened to all the other sectors although, i mean I, I i when i heard all these names i mentioned i run these work i was feeling pride i don't mm, know why i was feeling yeah, proud all the solid days, the the glory the days. <laughs> uh, but anyway i mean i guess i want to ask you is it good news because i read this morning that um, our Minister of Works, that's Fashola, apart from two things he said, one,
Somebody said, look, stop fixing our federal roads for us. If you fix our federal roads, the president says he's not going to pay you back because you people come back and claim excess. So leave it for us. We'll mind our business. We've inherited enough debt. We'll fix our federal You fix your state roads. Right. But I, when you were talking, I'm like, ah. And I was feeling sorry for Ike Kweremadu when they were stoning him with yam. But now I understand. I'm not supporting IPOP by any means. But I now understand why they were targeting the Southeast governors because I'm saying to myself, the problem is there for us to see. These people are stealing funds because they're not doing what they ought to do. If they did what they ought to do, people wouldn't be so aggrieved by them. So I'm saying that they're culpable. The governors are culpable. The government is culpable. So nobody should be let off the hook. Mm -hmm. But anyway, back to the newspaper article I read this morning. They said they're going to give us 309, 6.5, billion. They're going to dedicate to the approved construction of three roads. One is Ibadan. Uh, Ilesha Road, the second Niger Breed Road that links to the southeast, and then the Kanu Katsina Highway. But I know the Asaba Onicha Link Roads are taking 200 and, uh, 176 billion naira. They're swallowing that much. So is it good news? That's what I'm asking. It sounds like good news. <laughs> I, I, I don't even it believe it's even going to happen. It's fake news, <laughs> exactly. It's been approved. It's been approved. Yeah, as, 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 yeah, yeah, uh, but but just like, approved. Fashion is fast becoming a joke. A swab guy. And uh, really, I think he should resign soon so that wow. he doesn't get to the bottom. I wasn't saying that Sean. because Fashion is involved. I was feeling no, a little more ginger. No, no, no. Fashion is involved. He should go before he's... Chuka, you know being Now, the thing about the South is government. No, four years is the, 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 yeah. but, but let yes, please the mm -hmm. South is governors. There's something wrong with almost all of them. I agree. They absolutely think they are God. Have you seen Obiano? Mm. How he with struts his with his glasses. You don't see his eyes. He dresses in strange really ways well and behaves like mm. somebody who is doing everything right. Are you the one saying this? Yes, I am. Being in mm. the I've things been that we inherited. Uyo, Umaya, Did you have Uwere. any problem with Enugu? She's talking about Buburu. I want to Look, just I have, I have a friend who left for Enugu yesterday, left Lagos 6 a.m. and didn't get to Enugu until 9.30. Is that because of bad roads? That, I'm, I'm coming yeah. to that. Yes, because of bad roads. Yeah. Fashola saying, I remember the battle between Lagos State Government and Ogunlewe yes. yes. on federal roads, non-federal roads. Yes. And I don't expect, you know, Fashola that saying. we hold in such high esteem yeah. yeah. to be saying that. Yeah. And, now. Them back. and then that brings us to the issue of this issue of federal road, state road. Mm -hmm. The governors are culpable. The federal government is culpable. Mm -hmm. Abia State, for example, from 1999 to date, their government house is in a rented apartment. They've been building a government house for, a, for eternity. Mm. If you're just entering a bar from that uh, Portacourt Road as is, you know, you, you cry. You, you shed tears. I think you also cry when you're in a weary. Gosh, when we drove. Weary, weary, weary. It was so bad. It was so bad that Richard said that uh, PDP sent uh, chemical rains to destroy <laughs> the roads. So you will ask is okay, if we practice true federalism, mm. are these not the same governors that you will, you know, you will give power have, to yeah, that power you to, have? Yes, exactly. But the, the answer to that question is that we all now will no longer be looking at Abuja. We we'll fixated on our exactly. states and, then we and the region. We know that the solution to those problems lies in Umwaya, mm. in Uwere, in Benin, or yeah. you know, not oh, we are you know, we don't have money. We just pay mm. salary. I can tell you, Abia State's workers, they've not been paid salary for more than five months now. Wow! And then you expect such people not to be corrupt. Mm. And then the governor will come on air to tell you that he has yeah, delivered 75% uh, mm. of his campaign. So how do we challenge that? How do the, we make them accountable that's, to us? The, the, the question is, you see, during the election, we're all here discussing all of these things. And then some people say, well, it is what it is. Until we learn to all come out during election and ensure that those we vote into office are not because somebody has said it's PDP or it's APC. Yes. Let's begin to have a paradigm shift. And that's the only way you can have people that will truly say, no, these things are not right. We, we don't need to follow in, in that direction. Or yeah. until we do that, yeah. a man spends money to put somebody in office. Yeah. It's a business for him. It's he a business, yeah. yeah, I think it's, it's, okay. it's very just, smart. It's the same thing we're talking about. We mm. just yeah. need these people to do their job. Mm. So they're taking money or doing whatever. It's not the only country that we have fraud and things in the government. But just do the job. Let I us have some good roads. Because mm -hmm. now those roads are now attracting criminals. People are losing their lives. They're victims of the system. Yes. Mm -hmm. People are hurting their homes. There's a heart attack. You mm -hmm. can't get to the hospital. You'll mm -hmm. die. So it's just getting from bad to worse. So we really need to do something. Mm -hmm. Well, every journey has an end. Although we may be hitting the brake, we know you will keep cruising. So keep the comments coming on our social media platform on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. 
and on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time, same station, let's keep advocating for a better society. See you then. See ya. See ya. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, we can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's really. disastrous for a president to, even say to be unaware. unaware of the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a terrible, very strategy. Very terrible <laughs> strategy. And because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Yeah.